I'm Tim Crennan, and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, some you know, big advantages of applications for uh, the larger size FDM printers that we have. And there's lots of advantages to these machines, uh, ranging from you know, a large versatility in material options to choose from. It's not just the ABS plastic. We have, depending on whatever your uh, needs might be, we have lots of strong, durable, chemical resistant materials, materials that have unique certificates for food safe handling, aerospace, medical, uh, bio certs and stuff, depending on uh, what your application might need. And along with uh, those options on bigger machines, they generally have faster build speed options, uh, larger build chambers, so you can print really big parts. Uh, you can print big parts sectioned and make even huger parts. Uh, you can also print lots of small quantity parts to do large batch processing without having to restart print jobs over and over to get enough parts made. And that's really useful for doing a lot of like, you know, direct digital manufacturing. So with FDM, uh, just a really quick refresher. So FDM is the fused deposition modeling, right? So that's the style that works similar to like a uh, hot glue gun, right? So we have the uh, filament of material that gets brought up, heated up in the uh, heated section, is extruded out, and then it cools off and solidifies back into a rigid plastic. And you do that, you build up, you make big, strong, durable parts. Um, they can do two materials, so it does the model material and the support material, so you can do any geometries, any kind of overhang, and have full uh, fidelity and accuracy on any aspect of the model, and also about overhanging parts. So what's the whole the line of uh, production level FDM machines? Um, it runs from the, uh, we have the Fortis 380, there's a Fortis 380 carbon fiber edition. So this is uh, the lowest level machine that actually gives you access to our nylon 12 carbon fiber uh, material that's extremely strong, durable uh, material for making strong functional parts. Um, and it's got a big build chamber, you know, 14 inches by 12 by 12. And you can print nylon and the uh, ASA plastic, it's like an ABS plastic. And then from there we go up into the Forest 380, which can do a lot of uh, the engineering grade materials and, you know, a ABS, and they can do polycarbonates, nylon 12, nylon 6, PC ISO, which has like medical certs. And then we can get an uh, even bigger build chamber up into the 450, which goes up to 16 by 14 by 16 inch build area. And you can use the entire chamber. There's no like high quality mode or anything that shrinks the size of the chamber down. Whatever rate, layer resolution you're doing, you can use the entire build chamber. That gives you access into the Altems. And then we go into the Stratasys F900. And this is for really big parts where you can do a 36 by 24 by 36, so three feet by two feet by three foot build chamber where you can print uh, reliable, accurate parts, full size, and not worry about it finishing or completing at all. So it's the same reliability as all the other Stratasys machines. So with those grades of materials, we have the engineering grade, you know, polycarbonates and some nylons. We have the high performance level, which is your Ultems and your uh, nylon 12 carbon fiber and their new Antero 800 NA. And there's also some specialty materials out there like the uh, ST130. And we'll take a quick look at some of those. Uh, to point out some notable ones. So the nylon 12 carbon fiber, this is a extremely high, stiff, lightweight material that's great for, you know, functional prototyping and even end use parts a lot of people use these on because they're so durable. Um, depending where they'll be seen, they're usually not the uh, nicest aesthetically looking parts uh, because of the carbon fiber that's embedded in it. but if it's not a uh, you know outward facing thing that people are going to be handling, it's an extremely strong part. And so that, that stool there is actually built holding up that motorcycle so you can do work on it. And there's a bunch of other parts on that motorcycle that have some nylon 12 carbon fiber parts on it. But people like using this for jigs, fixtures, and production parts for uh, just brackets holding things in place. There's also the uh, Ultem 9085 plastic. This is a uh, it actually has a lot of uh, unique certs to it, including some aerospace certs. It's got flame smoke toxicity certs for its uh, amount of toxins it'll put off. If you light it on fire, it'll self-extinguish. And it's a uh, very strong, functional, high-temperature material, so it won't, you know, sag or anything in different temp higher temperature applications. Well, the, the unique material is the uh, ST-130. It's actually ST for sacrificial tooling material. So this material allows you to do really complex, unique, uh, like carbon fiber layups. So you can print like 
if you want to make that carbon fiber tube in that picture, you print the core cavity out of the sacrificial tooling material. So you just print straight out on the machine so you don't have to make any expensive tooling or molds to be able to get that core. So you just print it up. You do your carbon fiber or whatever material layup around it you want to use. And then when that's cured, you just dissolve out the core and you have a unique no clamshell uh, tooling application where you can get really lightweight, durable parts um, without having to do all the in-between steps that you usually need to get to those points. And it's a material designed specifically to uh, withstand uh, the temperatures and pressures of uh, you know, the vacuum forming around it when you're waiting for the uh, resins and everything to cure as you're laying it up. And then the Antero 800NA, this is a, a material that came out with very recently by Stratasys. It's actually a PEC-based uh, FDM material. It has their highest uh, like temperature and chemical resistances and also very low outgassing. So outgassing is more of an issue if you're putting things on satellites, which people have done with these materials. Um, so it doesn't have any issues uh, outgassing up in space. It has extremely high chemical resistances. So use these around uh, areas that might have like hydraulic fluid or other like caustic materials going on. You can now use direct manufactured digital parts um, that meet all the requirements that need, are needed for those types of situations. So it'll be good for you know aircraft and space applications where you're doing you know not super high volume uh, issues, but you can just print out your part and have it good to go. So. One of the things you can do with the large machines, on like the F900 specifically, they have a uh, basically a large part acceleration uh, option. So it gives you another layer thickness height on there. So you can print extremely large parts much faster and more efficiently. So usually if you're printing smaller parts, it's not too much, too big of an issue. Um, but once you start printing parts that are three feet by two feet by three feet, you know, it's going to take a long time. So we have these acceleration kit that lets you uh, print these up extremely quickly. So here's how an option. So it used to be the largest layer thickness you could do was the uh, T20 tip, a 13,000th of an inch slice. Now we can do a 20,000th of an inch slice. And what that gets you in speed comparison is up to 60% 60 60 faster. So if you're printing something this big on a T20, you to take 160 hours. All right, that's a long print job. Hopefully, you don't have any like, brownouts or anything at your facility while you're printing that. Now, with the acceleration kit, you can get down to 60 hours. So, you know, two and a half, three days um, is much better turnaround than 160 hours. And you can see the size of that part. So, that's actually the part that they're talking about that they print. It's actually the top cover of a Ford 450, all printed in one go. So, it's a uh, big savings there. Here's an example of a, a company called Utah Trikes that makes custom, uh, you know, three-wheel bicycles. And, you know, it's not huge uh, volume production that they're doing. So and some of their part uh, cycles that they're making have a lot of parts in them. So, you know, 450 distinct parts that they're only doing less than 100 of each part. So they were looking into 3D printing, and they started uh, using the nylon 12 carbon fiber material. It's extremely strong, durable material. You see that picture, they're actually using that. They printed the bracket to hold the uh, carbon fiber tubes to keep everything lined up. They're actually hammering it on, and like, it takes a lot of abuse. And not only have they been able to speed up their production time and save a whole bunch of costs, is that they've been able to go uh, use actual end-use parts out of this. So on one of their uh, bikes that takes 450 parts, 150 of those are now 3D printed and ready to go in the end use uh, production. So they're very strong, durable. They, they put up to all the uh, abuses that they need them to. And it's, it's a great alternative to having to machine things out of other types of plastics or make injection molding tooling for low number run parts. Another option is, uh, you know, printing parts for uh, to replace tooling. So this is an option where uh, instead of making this giant jig to do your fiberglass layups over, so now you can 3D print that entire jig. So it, there's, there's lots of advantages here on top of, you know, cost and time savings. There's also a really big weight savings too. 
So instead of costing you know $40,000 and taking 10 weeks for something that, that big to get made, it's just specifically to spec. Um, now they can just 3D print it out of uh, like Ultem 9085 material. It's strong and rigid enough to withstand what their, the layups they want to do on it. You can print to the exact geometries you need and, you know, costs 2500 bucks. takes two days to make and weighs 15 pounds so one person can easily pick it up, move it around, store it. It's not just bolted down and taking up a whole bunch of uh, space on your uh, lab where you're doing your production. So next is a video of a company, uh, we'll just watch a little bit of this, for uh, Thalaxis. So this is a company that does a lot of automotive uh, OEM stuff where they need to make manufacturing tooling for assembly lines where they have people going and actually assembling parts together. So now they can make large custom jigs to put their parts on for assembly and improve the overall assembly time and efficiency that they're uh, dealing with on these. You see they're up in Canada. And they're very big complex jigs, so they have a lot going on and they're able to build into the jig um, because once you bring in and start doing the direct digital manufacturing, the complexity is not so much of an issue anymore. So they start being able to put, you know, a lot of small tweaks for efficiencies for how the operator is using it and assembling different parts to save a couple seconds here, a couple seconds there, put in safety operations where they put a uh, fingerprint uh, mount on each side, so you have to put your finger in for it to articulate the motor so that way you make sure nothing is, you know, accidentally have any pinch point zones. And the jigs used to be really hard to maintain and heavy, up, you know, 150 pounds where you need a couple people or you got to get the forklifts over there and move these around to change up your stations. Again, with the large scale uh, machine, uh, like the Forge 900, they print the whole thing in one print job, uh, an Ultem 9085 plastic, so it's extremely strong, durable material. Um, and they were able to cut the weight of the jig by over 100 pounds. So, uh, you know, that jig in the picture, that, that guy's, uh, using is only weighs like 25 pounds, so you can pick it up with two hands and go put it somewhere and change it out. And that with the uh, being able to re 3D print it, <coughs> you can uh, keep doing your iterations on it and uh, improving your efficiencies when you find areas that are lacking. So save weight, save uh, design time, reduce time in your manufacturing cycles, uh, lots of advantages to uh, bringing this kind of stuff in-house. Another option is uh, like thermoforming molds uh, where you can make a, uh, and you see this is a really big part. So not only was it printed on a big machine, but you can actually have that dovetail joint in the middle on that top picture. We can see that it was printed in two parts, and then they jointed it together to make an even larger part. And the cool thing about thermoform is you can print with porosity as, like, some of the parameters in there. So you don't have to go through and then drill out a million holes to get your airflow suction through. You can print your part porous enough and print it in a material that's high enough temperature resistance that you can thermoform large plastic parts right over it without having to do any... A really expensive, long turnaround, like machining to be able to make these parts. Uh, you can also post-process it too. So once you printed it out and you're worried about layer lines or in specific areas, you can always sand it smooth and do post-processing operations after you've glued it all together to make sure it's going to be all nice and smooth everywhere, and you don't have any uh, distortions from heat. And it's you know great cost-effective thing for a uh, low-volume tooling. Um, and because, you know, they are plastic tools, right, so it's not really a great replacement if you have something, say, you're doing tens of thousands of molds you want to make out of it. This would be more for, oh, we're doing a couple hundred uh, molds over this part. You can just 3D print it, and it's a great uh, way to get there. Another thing you can do with this, if you are, say, trying to do tens of thousands of uh, molds over it, is this is like a bridge to production. So if you have to wait two months for your tooling to get made, you can go ahead and 3D print this and get this all set up and going in a week and then start doing your runs on it. And then when your actual tooling gets made out of metal and brought in-house, now you can just replace it over to that and get up and running much faster without having to uh, have that downtime just waiting for the uh, part to get made. And here's an uh, example from Kelly Manufacturing Company. So this is a uh, 
An example of direct digital manufacturing, and this is a company that does uh, just general aviation instruments. And one of the instruments uh, they do is a, it's a toroid housing for a big aerospace sensor that goes in some aircraft. And they used to have to, you know, get them uh, cast out of urethane. They would be fairly low accuracy, so they'd need a lot of sanding and deal with, like, flashing and stuff when they got them in. Uh, it would be a long turnaround time, three to four weeks waiting for those, they, you know, for 500 parts at a time. Um, and then if there are any design changes, then they have to get whole new tooling made, and that has a whole large cost associated with it, too. Uh, so the advantages they saw in the 900 was that not only was the material strong enough for end-use production part, but they could actually um, print all 500 parts in a single run and have it good to go the next day, and then you know cut their uh, or you know in a couple days and cut their production time from sitting around waiting four weeks to get their parts, and then have to sand them down, print them all in one go, and then when they're done, get them out and. Uh, you know, they were better tolerance than the urethane parts, so they didn't need any hand sanding or anything like that after the fact. And it ended up with a, uh, I think it only ended up saving them about 5% per part on cost. So that's a benefit on its own, but the, like, near 90% time savings that it gave them was also a huge advantage. So you're not sitting there waiting for third-party uh, operators to hopefully not have any issues with their manufacturing or their shipping or any weather issues that cause your parts not to arrive on time. Another uh, option for extremely large machines is uh, Stratasys actually came out with this machine called the Stratasys H2000. And this is a, this used to be called their Infinity Build uh, Demonstrator, but now it's a, uh, an actual viable product. And it's a pretty crazy machine. So basically they took 3D printing FDM and turned it on its side. So instead of building up and down, they're building left to right. And have the part can get pulled out, the base plate can get pulled out to the side as far as you want it to go. So you don't have to worry about, you know, space constraints. You can print a part, you know, that's 20 feet long. And this uh, specific machine works great for that. Um, the picture over on the right is a uh, kind of a uh, layup mold for doing some uh, carbon fiber layups in. They print that out of Ultem, and that not only can it print really big parts, you can print them very quickly because it's a little bit different technology in it. It's not filament; it's actually uh, powder uh, pellets in there that get melted down and extruded out. So they print this part that's about five feet tall in 23 hours. So you can crank out some really big durable, long, functional parts. And it's used all over the place. Uh, Boeing uses it. Ford was using it. They could print out an entire dash of a car and one print job on this. Doesn't matter how long it needed to be. They just go across the whole thing in one go. Um, and then Boeing was actually using it a little bit for production where they would print uh, aircraft interiors. So they could print full side panels on the interior for an aircraft or around like the window and stuff, floor to ceiling, print that whole part up and one print job really easily. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So, I mean, that covers just a big rough overview of uh, a lot of the uh, options you can do with uh, large 3D printers. And it's more than just the, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, it's more than just, you know, big parts, right? It's the, uh, you can print lots of small parts. And you can also, in the bigger machines, you get more access to the higher end materials. Uh, and a lot of those examples showed, you know, Ultem 9085 because it's just such a strong, durable material. But there's a lot of options out there for the uh, new materials like the Nylon 12 and the Antero 800 for end use parts or even just printing large volume of uh, polycarbonate parts too. Um, one of the materials in here, the PC ISO, that actually has the uh, medical compatible certs. Um, so you can actually, is certified for like skin contact, and you can use it as surgical guides for custom fit to specific user applications. Um, and then the Ultem 1010 has certs for uh, food safe. So you can use this in food handling operations, containers, food scoops, all kinds of uh, unique areas that can be leveraged because it can be uh, sterilized. But that pretty much covers 
most of the uh, large parts and things you can do with it. If you guys have more questions about any of that, you can always uh, shoot me an email or shoot an email to uh, CATI in general and uh, see if we can help you out with anything you might be thinking about. Um, we also have a whole host of upcoming webinars that I'll show right here. So for the next one's coming up, we have a, a weld mints one, and then there's a uh, SolWorks just tips and tricks, and some desktop metal uh, information too. And uh, other than that, I think that kind of wraps it up for today. Just a quick, short and sweet presentation. Didn't want to take up too much of your guys' time.